very, very happy to welcome Mr. George Sifianos. After uh, the so interesting introduction uh, about uh, analysis movement from uh, uh, Serge Verny, uh, I believe that uh, you'll have the opportunity to really understand all this research and PhD researches that have been made uh, from the students, which is uh, amazing. And uh, so Mr. Sifianos uh, will uh, um, tell us, reveal better, all about uh, the animation that exists on Parthenon's frieze. Let me say a few words about Mr. Sifianos. So George Sifianos was born in Greece holds a PhD in animation aesthetics from the University of Sorbonne. He's a filmmaker and professor emeritus of animation at Ensad in Paris, where he founded the Department of Animation Studies in 1995. He has lectures worldwide, worldwide including universities in Europe, India, Korea, Japan, and China. As a member of PSL Academic Research Group, he recent research interest concerns animation forms found on the Parthenon frieze. His book, Aesthetics of Animated Cinema, received the 2014 McLaren Lambert Award for the best academic book by the Society for Animation Studies and the Hemingway Grant in 2015. His films have also won a number of awards at international festivals. Please welcome Mr. Sifianos. Okay, uh, thank you for all that, lies. <laughs> uh, thank you for the invitation and thank, thank you for coming. I will just uh, start uh, immediately as we have not um, the subject is Phidias the Animator, as you can see. Uh, about 10, uh, 15 years ago, I visited the small library of the Keramikos uh, Museum, or perhaps that of the Stoa uh, of Atalus. My memory is not uh, precise. It was summer, it was very hot, as now, more than now. Uh, in uh, the display, I came across uh, this book uh, with the picture of the gods of the East uh, Frieze of the Parthenon. I have trained as an animator in animation cinema, and the succession of their postures challenged me. Their gestures followed each other with regularity, as if they were sketching uh, the stage of the same action. This was uh, strongly reminiscent of what are called uh, key frames uh, on in, an, in uh, a cartoon. That is to say, the most uh, characteristic uh, drawings to, rep to represent uh, an action. I will show it more clear. I do it uh, uh, digitally, the clear. Uh, the, the image. In this sequence, there were even anticipation positions where you start by going in the opposite direction of the movement intended uh, as when you pull the leg back before kick, kicking the, a ball. Uh, this part of the relief uh, intrigued me a, a lot, uh, so I decided to try to verify my idea by superimposing the figures of the gods and by putting them in succession in time. To my great surprise, my intuition uh, uh, turned out to be correct. Consistent movement existed through the image. The individual figures of the gods functioned as the complementary stages precisely of the act of pointing. The movement united gods into a single virtual figure. Mm -hmm. 
but what were they pointing to? I found out later that the gods as one body pointed toward the procession of Athenians which arrived in their honor. This movement made sense. sense. Uh, at the time, I had never seen the entire frieze since it was still scattered around the world and the new Acropolis uh, Museum did not exist. The only place I saw, uh, saw it in full was in this book uh, with, uh, which uh, contained the frieze in uh, miniature. Uh, I then wrote to the photographer Socrates Mavromatis, who generally sent me uh, all the photos in large uh, format. I will always be grateful to him as this study could not have existed without uh, his uh, contribution. I then had the entire freeze and material to work, to work on, a job that kept me busy for uh, the following 10 years. Uh, with the same method of uh, superimposing the images, I was able to see very quickly that the use of the latent movement of the figures existed elsewhere and in a systematic way. I observed the sequence of Katla uh, in the south uh, frieze. I separate the cattles too. Although the, uh, there are uh, missing figures, the superimposition of the cattle did not contradict my intuition again. The sequence of animals form the movement of a single animal. Pa, 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 pa. More than the representation of 10 of the 10 individual cattle, we can see through the figures the representation of animal power in its struggle from free, for freedom. There is something general behind the particular. But the movement of the animal is not alone. The people that uh, they accompany participate in the action. It should be emphasized that this complexity and consistency in the coordination of postures is uh, neither easy nor simple. It can only be the result of an intention. Uh, this requires knowledge, concrete knowledge of the analysis of movement and it would be absurd to consider that this perfect coordination is a simple result of chance. A whole field of research was opened. It was necessary to widen the gap. Let's try to pick up the thread in, in an order. We know from the studies of Marc Azema in particular and many others that the interest in movement in representations already begins in the painting of prehistoric caves. Uh, here from uh, the Abri du Colombier in Ardèche, uh, France. Uh, here an engraved uh, beef rib from the Grotte de la Vache in Ariège, France. The word is of Azema, always. Uh, we can see a prehistoric thomatrop uh, on bone washer from Perigord Museum. I will try to flip it, but it is not easy. 
uh, you can see that there are two, two, two positions and when you flip it, it uh, becomes like uh, the toys we know. Uh, and uh, a drawing on a pottery from Iran from the late half of the third uh, millennium before Christ. Uh, we can see the animation. Since prehistoric times, we also observe several strategies that artists have developed to represent movement in painting and sculptures. Okay. Uh, one of them, very widespread, consists in combining two quite distinct stages of the movement, in particular of a horse, uh, within the same image. Uh, like here in Tassili, in the south of Alge Algeria, here in Assyria, Assyria, and at the famous Epsom Derby by Theodore uh, Jericho with his uh, flying gallop. These postures have been much discussed uh, until uh, my bridge um, uh, chronophotographs proved uh, that a horse during its gallop never adopts uh, a posture with the front and rear legs in extension simultaneously. This is only possible for other animals uh, such as uh, uh, felines or uh, lagomorphs. Another strategy for representing uh, movement is found in the apparently static and rigid posture of Kuros. This is from Archaeological Museum of Athens. Uh, here, leaning the statue on the point of a triangle and gradually rotating the axis of the feet, knees, hips and shoulders creates a twisting form that constantly causes the statue to feel like it is moving. Uh, with a similar intention, Egypt systematically adopted the twist in the figures, combining profile and face uh, position. Here a po uh, portrait of um, Hezai, Hezai from Cairo Museum. I found more, more than 15 different strategies uh, that concern the representation of movement. One of them is the analysis in stages uh, that we see in the frieze of the Parthenon. During this uh, research, I also found in Egypt and Assyria representation that exploit the analysis of movement. In Egypt, this approach seems incomplete sometimes and limited in stages. Here is an image from the Mastaba of Aketetep in Saqqara. We can see the old uh, kingdom. It's about 2,700 to 2,200. And we can see it in animation. Look at the, the uh, last character. Sometimes it is even erroneous, the analysis of movement, uh, in its development, as it is uh, shown uh, here. This is from Mastaba of Tai, similar period. Uh, if this image with the winnowing men coming from the Bastaba of Tai is carefully observed, uh, an animator may no notice that the spacing between the position is reversed. Uh, to create the effect of a sharp gesture necessary to throw the ears of uh, wheat in the air, one should put the second figure 
close to the start position rather than the finish. With the current position, the movement slows down and the gesture is less effective. Uh, interest in the analysis of movement has therefore been permanent since prehistoric times. We can only observe in the freeze a profound knowledge of anatomy and analysis uh, that is not uh, noticed in the same degree in Egypt or elsewhere. In the freeze, the analysis of movement, movement shows a very good knowledge, for example, of animal locomotion. By superimposing a series of courses from the West freeze, we can see a complex movement. Okay. Um, in this scene, we can note that the transmission, okay, let's see it again, in, in, uh, I will talk in the same time. Um, we can note that the, the transmission of the weight from one leg to other is done diagonally, which is uh, the case for horses, but not for all animals, where we can observe a circular or alternating uh, transmission. Uh, it should be noted that animal locomotion was not clear until the arrival of chronophotographs and the studies of Murray and Mybridge at the end of the 19th uh, century. But before moving forward in the analysis of the freeze, it is important to dispel. Okay, I will stop it to don't disturb us. Um, it is important to dispel two misunderstandings concerning movement. One, first, the confusion between uh, representing symbolically a movement and making a movement felt. Second, the confusion between movement which is condensed in a single figure and cinematic movement which involve several figures. The first mis misunderstanding. Here is an image of um, Episkyros or Epikinos. It was a ball game uh, in the ancient Greece. Uh, regarding the symbolic representation, a relief like that of Episkyros has movement since it illustrates an action. On the other hand, with the same descriptive logic, the kuros, a kuros can be considered static since its posture is not active. However, if the ball player function as a pictogram, as an illustration of an action, a kuros, despite is its posture of immobility, provokes a strong sensation of movement. If we contemplate the statue physically rather than from photos, 
its twisting shape and its imposing height make us lose our bearings of space and feel a certain vertigo. If you go to the Museum of, of Athens, this statue is uh, big, uh, more than this. So you, you are really small in front of this, and you feel this. On, we lose the, the, the feeling of uh, space. Um, there are, therefore, two different levels of perception. The symbolic one provides logic information of, of, on the content. He plays ball, therefore he is in motion. While the other one occurs through sensation, through a physical feeling. This is the difference between intelligible understanding and sensible perce perception, as uh, Serge mentioned uh, er uh, earlier. Uh, the second misunderstanding that much must be avoided is to confuse a movement which uh, result, results from the, an analysis in stage represented by different people and the movement of synthesis uh, which seeks to condense a movement in the posture of a single person. The later seeks to express the quintessence of an action, pemtusia, quintessence, uh, as in Myron's uh, Discobolus, uh, 460 before Jesus Christ, it is in Roma, uh, which is uh, represented at the peak of tension just before throwing his disc. Uh, these two approaches can also exist uh, simultaneously. Uh, in the frieze, Artemis, for example, is represented individually in a posture that evokes the gesture of someone trying to shoot an arrow while arranging her clothing and participating in the collective action of uh, gods. The movement that concert has is the, in this study is literally a cinematographic movement like that on, of an animation film. Uh, in its de decomposition of uh, an action, uh, it is the decomposition of an action into uh, successive uh, stage. This type of representation of movement is rarely observed and uh, very often remains unknown to archaeologists. What is most important in the frieze is the movement one can read between the lines, between the image. This hidden movement conveys meaning. If we go back to the scene of uh, the gods, we can observe that the Latin movement implies the idea of collectivity. The action is not the act of an individual, a god, a king, or a hero, uh, but the result of a collective complementarity. If each individual has his own role, it is their contradictory but harmonious coexistence that produces the message. The gods pointing to the oncoming procession show, show that they appreciate the devotion of Athenians. It is not difficult to distinguish in this dialectic form the principle of democracy, which proceeds by the confrontation of ideas and collaboration. Another example. In the previous Katla scene, uh, we can notice that animal power is finally mastered without too much agitation by the uh, attendants, and the animal ends up uh, lowering its head, defeated. The implicit 
meaning is that man dominates over nature. On this point, we can note that the landscape is not present in the frieze as later in the Trajan column, for example. It is only evoked. Everything is uh, interpreted uh, through the human figure. Our subject is uh, quite complex and there are many aspects that we are not uh, going to talk about here. Uh, concerning the landscape, for example, I will not talk about the way the water uh, is evoked in the frieze. We we'll just uh, see few few images very fast. Here the dress, the folds of the dress uh, rem reminds somehow or here another interpretation. Uh, here is a similar, here another one. Let's not forget, let's not forget that Poseidon, god of the sea, was the second candidate after Athena to be the patron god of Athens and he had special ties with horses. I will not talk about the swirling movements like uh, vortices. Just a small example with drawings by, by me. Uh, compl completed there. Um, I will not take talk about the convergent form we obtain if we project the men, horses and chariots in a view from above. First stage, second stage and so on. Uh, I will not elaborate on why the procession does not start in the southwest corner as it is generally accepted, but rather uh, near figure 23 uh, from the west, the, the down place we can see with red. I will not talk about the importance of the complementarity of a magistrate 47 in the east and 23 in the west. I will not talk about the question why gods turn their backs on the gift offered to them or the question which way should one discover the freeze from the north or from the south because each time you have to follow half the direction of the procession and half the opposite direction. I will not talk, frustration, isn't it? I do it uh, intentionally. We will not talk about optical illusions, nor why we can consider that freeze will not, uh, was not intended for a physical visit, but rather for a mental contemplation, as in a kind, as in a prayer, in, a, in one way. Uh, we will not explain the animation of the Apobats, Apobats demonstra demonstration and surrounding actions uh, such as uh, uh, can be seen in this uh, film. Another part. And a bigger. A com combination of the, the whole things because there is a continuity and sometimes goes to one side and goes to the other side like the waves of the sea. Okay, I say I will not explain that. Uh, I will not develop how using movement analysis we can make very precise hypotheses on the reconstitution of missing figures. We will not uh, comment how actions can be timed as in this central motif of the, uh, the uh, handing over the, uh, of the peplos.
we will not present the evolution of the symphonic form of the frieze with an anacrusis in the beginning and a coda at the end and the use of musical figures like da capo or al segno, stretto, appoggiatura, or even the dramatic pr uh, principle of uh, double detonation, which we can distinguish in, in composition. It is more difficult, now I will start to what about uh, I will talk. It is more difficult to evoke in today's unprepared audience the idea that the frieze is conceived as a musical score. That is why I left this important topic for the end. For more than a century, we have been talking about the symphony of the Parthenon's frieze, but we do not, do not feel very sure, uh, sure uh, about uh, this assertion. What do we mean concretely? Before taking this subject, I should be remember, it should be remembered that music, along with gymnastics, was one of the fundamental subjects in the education in antiquity. Music was everywhere in their uh, lives. We must also recall that Pythagorean uh, considerations on the harmony of the cosmos. The universe uh, was conceived as a harmony, the famous music of spheres that uh, Pythagoras even claimed to hear. It's a mystification intentional by, by himself. Uh, this consideration uh, also dictated the ethics. You always had to respect the measure, the metron. Good was integration to this harmony and bad the excess, the hybris. These values were deeply anchored and constant of the conception of the world until the sophists by the person of Protagoras declared that man is the measure of the world. A radical change that happens in the period of the Parth Parthenon's uh, construction. But if only briefly I would like to discuss some consideration on the translation of the frieze into music. Music works by selecting sounds produced by waves of uh, proportional lengths. A do, for example, and another do at an octave uh, distance correspond to a ratio of one to two. A fourth correspond to a, uh, to a ratio of four threes, a fifth to a ratio of three halves, etc. The sounds during the wave synchronization are called harmonics. This, from time to time, you, you see all three lines in uh, like a horizontal line. These periodic meetings, resonances, distinguish thus certain sounds by extracting them from the chaos uh, we qualify as uh, noise. In the frieze, figures that refer to each other create privile privileged relationships like resonances, like resonances. Their continuity uh, distinguishes them from all other postures similarly to harmonics from noise in music. It should be noted that if we compare the frieze with uh, organization modes from other periods, uh, we do not often observe this musical principle um, in the coiled uh, composition of uh, Trajan's column. For example, here, if you take uh, uh, it is more the history, the story, who is uh, saying, but if you take one figure, the following one, 
is not really connected or, um, and the third one is not at all. Uh, from time to time it happens, but it was not an intention. Um, so uh, we have not musical but narrative uh, preoccupation. The same can be said uh, to, for the Bayeux uh, tapestry or the Japanese uh, narrative Emaki scrolls. Here is from the study of Takahata that uh, Serge mentioned earlier. On the other hand, there are indications that in Assyria and Egypt, compositions were sometimes based on musical system. One can find reliefs uh, where elements are composed uh, with a similar approach to off-bean uh, rhythms in music. This is from Apadana in Persepolis. Uh, you, you can uh, observe the reaction between one line one and the other who is just down. Um, we can also find the theme and variation form, very common in music, uh, which is a musical one in this representation, for example, from Thais Mastaba. Uh, we have a very concrete composition that is organized in the theme and variation way. I can't uh, develop it, but you can, you can observe that there are uh, similar figures that a repeater are declined, uh, for, for example, at the end is a kind of similar attached animal. Uh, the, the, there is a condensation, uh, the, the animal's legs um, becomes more closer, uh, the number of um, figures, the repetition of some pos postures of the figures, uh, the, the size of uh, uh, corners, uh, and, and so on. There are other kind of uh, uh, theme and variation uh, way of organizing. Uh, the relation with music, uh, it's up to be found, but uh, the theme and variation is musical way of uh, organization. In regards of music of the frieze, it should be note noted that uh, it uses counterpoint. The use of polyphony and counterpoint in antiquity uh, has caused much ink to flow in the past, especially in the, in the 19th century. I cannot develop it here, but the definitive answer is given by the specialist in the music of antiquity, François Auguste Gevaert, who considers that antiquity knew polyphony and counterpoint, but preferred monody. Uh, never that, never uh, at less, the composition of the frieze is polyphonic and in counterpoint, if only by the fact that its actions develop simultaneously on both sides, north and south. These actions advance parallel and offset and only synchronize when they arrive in the east near the goals. Counterpoint is also presented in the details as in the gesture of gods where we see a, a movement on the left uh, uh, and the right uh, arm uh, which complement each other by alternating. You can observe that the end is not by the left hand but it's, it's by the left hand not by the, the right who starts and so on. But apart from resonances created by the posture, apart from the complementarity of the counterpoint in the whole frieze and, some, uh, and in some parts, we can observe that the width of the forms follows the intervals of the musical scales of the time and also their ethos. 
Here uh, we have the main three main uh, uh, um, genos scale to, 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 to go fast, to translate fast. The, the diatonic scale, genos, for example, who is combined, on, co combined only tones and the se semitones, the, the first one, and considered uh, manly, corresponds to the forms found in cavalry on both sides, south and north of uh, the frieze. You can see the main uh, scale is uh, that of legs and the other is that of uh, bodies, who is half and, uh, and up. Sorry. Uh, it looks like uh, di diatonic, um, manly. On the other hand, the fineness of the folds uh, combined with the wider spacing of the bodies bring the shapes of the ergastins in the eastern part closer to the enharmonic scale, the down one, uh, which uh, composed by Carter tones, tones and detons corresponded to an ethos majestic and ceremonial. It should be uh, remembered that at the time a moral quality was associated with each musical scale, which is why Plato sought to ban certain scales, considering that they corrupt uh, morality. We know the association since antiquity of spatial dimension or colors um, with musical sounds through the writings of Plato, Aristotle, Aristoxens of Taranto, Aristide Cantillian, or uh, through the writings of uh, contemporary authors such as Professor Robert Frances, uh, the work of, uh, the work of uh, Gestalt Psychology, uh, or the composer Olivier Messiaen. Low sounds are associated with low space, high sound, sounds with high space, never the opposite. In order to verify this musical correspondence with the organization of the phrase, the freeze, uh, we tried it with the composer Ivan Bumans, a translation of a fragment of the relief into music. How, How did we proceed? Without using the scales of the or the instruments of antiquity, we simply separated the shapes into wide and less wide parts, as well as their arising or falling orientation or their rhythmic spacing. Larger shapes, such as bodies, uh, have been associated with low pitching timbre sounds and proportionally high-pitched timbre sounds with narrower shapes, like the legs of uh, horses. The melody was guided by the rising or falling orientation of each part of the form. And here is the result of this experiment. Suspense. Uh, please try to, to, to concentrate to, to low sounds and follow the, the top line, for example, 
for the high pitched uh, sounds and, and follow the legs. One more time. The phrase can be translated literally into music in uh, qualification, its qualification of symphony is based on a concrete form. Of course, I'm not claiming that the phrase was created as a score with the aim uh, of uh, being decoded and interpreted as such. What I would like to show is that as the conception of antiquity of the cosmos was musical, this vision permitted the forms down to the, uh, down to the smallest detail in a very concrete, a very precise way, unimaginable of even for us. Uh, it is in this sense that movement analysis, animation, in other words, serves this conception, conception through correspondences from one form to another, similarly to music resonances. In conclusion, with these arguments and uh, all uh, the other that we have not been able to develop here, we can consider that the freeze is a kind of score which can inform us a lot about the musical perception of antiquity. Even more, it constitutes a standard matter which condenses all the conception of the world of classical antiquity at the time of its apogee. It is up to us to decipher it and understand this uh, form in its essence, which goes far beyond the simple thematic narration of the Panathenaic uh, procession. Thank you very much. You are very kind. Thank you, Mille Merci. Thank you, George. Uh, it was really a revelation. I think that. Uh, uh, we realized that animation uh, music didn't start in Disney Studios, it started here in Greece. <laughs> so, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate. You have Yorgos here. It's an opportunity. And as you said, uh, both uh, Serge. Yes, yeah, Serge as well. For um... Yes? Any questions? much firstly great presentation it was actually very interesting but i have a question about the final video the music uh, how did you determine from what which scale the music is going to start because there was sorry more 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 more, more slowly okay uh, in the final video with the music uh, which factor determined from what note, let's say, the music is going to start? Because there was symphony at some moment. It wasn't atonal completely. Uh, it was that. It was that intentional, or is that something? Just I, I, you, can somebody can tra translate to me. I, I have An some uh, okay, no. uh, unknown words. Ελληνικά. Oh, ναι, ναι, στα ελληνικά, ωραία. Uh, στο βίντεο, στο τελευταίο, που είναι με τη μουσική. Πώς διαλέξατε την κλίμακα στην οποία θα παίχτε η μουσική ή με ποια νότα ξεκίνησε το κάθε όργανο, α πούμε, πιο βαριέ ναι. ή πιο ψηλέ φωνέ. Οκ, οκ, thank you for, for the question. Um, uh, I'm not a musician. Uh, we collaborate with a, 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 a musician who is a professional now. In this period, he was a student, but already a musician. And um, um, we just uh, we could uh, uh, stop and start uh, uh, higher or uh, lower. This was not the the first intention. The intention was to to check if a kind of articulation functioned. We could uh, start, uh, but comparably, um, we have not the image. Uh, uh, 
Anyway, it's not, uh, it's not important. Uh, huh? Can you show the, the image? As you, as you can see, uh, the, the, bodies, uh, uh, the bodies have a kind of uh, larger um, uh, shapes. And comparably, the legs are uh, two or three um, times uh, um, more, uh, more uh, narrow. And we decide for fat uh, place to use tuba. And for uh, uh, narrow shapes, to use a violoncello and uh, clarinet and so on. And uh, uh, just comparably, uh, the, the high level of, uh, we could uh, reproduce the same uh, thing in higher or in more uh, down uh, level. Εμένα αυτό το βίντεο μου έδειξε, τουλάχιστον έτσι όπως το κατάλαβα, όπως το animation χρειάζεται να υπάρχει το pacing, ας πούμε. Να υπάρχει. Το pacing, να, η κίνηση να μην είναι μια μόνο κόμμα, να υπάρχει μια παύση, για να υπάρχει μια ροή. Το ίδιο είναι και στη μουσική ανάμεσα στα όργανα, δηλαδή και φαίνεται ξεκάθαρα και οπτικά εδώ. Και είναι η μουσική και η ζωγραφική ενώνεται σε πολλά επίπεδα, και οπτικά και μουσικά, πιστεύω. I will translate, or you can translate. In yeah, I can translate. Uh, this video is an example of that uh, it's, it uh, explains that music and animation it has the same pacing, the same the same principles that follow the movement of animation to be a more articulate and more uh, readable. The same apply for music, the rhythm and the pauses, when to start, when to stop, how fast, how slow to go. Uh, they are they correspond with each other. The, the timing and the spacing are two two important uh, um, um, things for uh, for animation, as you as you uh, you you say. And uh, in, in fact, it is it is observed. I try to find this, uh, who is. Uh, not developed in music, but uh, if you if you observe uh, um, in the first line, the 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 arms with the changement of uh, side, with uh, an alternation in the beginning and a repetition, a moving repetition, or the the wave in the third line from the top, the waving of legs, combined with the other elements, more more uh, heavy, more uh, and so on. There is a kind of uh, complementarity in the organization of all details. Yeah, definitely. And, and also, another thing that I have noticed is that in music, when composing with main instruments in an orchestra, the same principles that apply with animation, like leading or follow through, or as you explained with the hands, that one hand raises. Uh, they play with each other, like when the hand raises and falls again and it leads us to the other hand. The same thing can apply with a, with a black violin that leads um, the melody to the viola, that leads it to the bass. And all that play with each other the same way that movies do. Uh, that's why I found uh, the presentation really interesting, and uh, especially this one. Anticipation, because it was the starting point for me. If you, if you, you, I will not uh, play it again, but you, perhaps you can find the image. Um, the uh, gods in the, in the, in the first, uh, uh, first uh, image, uh, you have the, uh, from the left, go down, go down in anticipation, and after going up, I believe so, yes. That, that is exactly the follow-through. I don't remember how exactly to describe it. Yeah. 
the same the same thing is in the in the um, global uh, if i found the the drawing here globally um you uh, in my my re research they if they don't uh, don't start at the top Uh, I am out of the frame. Um, what I wanted to say. Yeto? Ah, okay, 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 thank you. Th thank you. Uh, there is a principle uh, that I found there. There is space. Um, Phidias um, gave some indication. Uh, every every um, uh, horse or uh, uh, character, um, a, a small part of him uh, overlaps the next figure. So you, ca you can put them on the space, and that's I, I did uh, with, uh, with that. Um, It's here in the in the east is much more complicated because it is a question also of uh, of um, but with that that uh, method I found that this uh, the uh, 23 figure and west is the more uh, far because the other are going uh, progressively so there is a space and there is a kind of uh, using uh, illusions that take a kind of uh, anamorphosis and becomes like that, the, the form. Anyway. It looks like we could be talking about this forever, Can we? Uh, which is incredible. Can we close the session and we can continue uh, informally the, the conversation? Thank uh, you Marimeta. very, very much. Thank you so much. Okay, see you this afternoon. Thank you for being here with us. This afternoon we will go on with the students from Greece who have been uh, awarded um, in, uh, uh, in, in Greece.